So, you want to get into flight sims? You came to the right place. We'll check out the best games to start with, what kind of equipment you need, and I'll answer the most common questions you probably have about flight sims in general. Flight simulations are challenging to learn, but very rewarding once you get the basics down. It's not that hard, though, if you know where and how to take your first steps. On the flight sim market, you'll find everything from free-to-play options up to full price titles. Beyond that, you might invest in maps and ridiculously detailed planes for 50 or even over 100 bucks. While that's all awesome stuff, it's not needed at the beginning. You can enter the flight sim space for a lot less. A wholesome experience already is possible for 1 euro or even completely free. The following suggestions are my personal opinion, others might think different. But I guess I've got some valid arguments to support my take on the topic. Let's go! The first possible entry point is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Stop! Yes, I know, it's a sim focused on civil aviation, but don't run away now if you had something military in mind. FS 2020 can still be your first stop because it's included in the Game Pass, which you can get for as cheap as 1 euro if you never had a subscription before. You also need to learn how to get your plane into the air and how to point it into the right direction anyways before you can start shooting at things. And that's where FS 2020 excels. The tutorials are very well made and teach you everything you need about basic flying. The game itself is beautiful and includes the whole planet, because it's based on real satellite data. Flight physics are modeled at an excellent level and the best thing is, you can comfortably play it with just a gamepad. Here's me trying out the tutorial with an old Xbox 360 controller with centering issues instead of my usual gear. No problem at all. A very nice experience. FS2020 also lets you configure the level of realism to your liking. And if you struggle with some of the more complex mechanics of the simulation, don't worry, assistance systems like Takeoff Auto Rudder, which keeps your plane straight at takeoff, will help you over the first few hurdles. There's tons of things to do in FS2020 besides flying lots of different planes, especially with add-ons. There's Neofly for instance, which creates kind of a campaign for you. As a bush pilot, for example, you take on jobs in remote areas, which means you need to transport cargo or passengers to remote places only a plane can reach comfortably. This includes landing on very short runways or frozen lakes, sometimes in bad weather or even at night. That's more exciting than you probably thought as I said civil aviation, isn't it? In the end, you may even run your very own airline if you feel like it. So. Now here you are, after your first month in the flight sim space. You know what flaps are, how to take off and land, and you've probably made friends with different types of stall. What's next? Well, you could keep playing Flight Simulator 2020 while you try out some combat flight sims. Let's start with another possible entry point. If you don't like FS2020 or your hardware isn't beefy enough to run it at decent frame rates. It's called IL-2 Sturmovik Great Battles. IL-2 is a classic World War II flight sim released in 2013, which means its hardware requirements are a lot more relaxed. It's a nice way to learn how to fly prop planes and very early jets from all factions involved. The difficulty level is also highly adjustable, you can tune down the sim to feel almost arcadey. The included tutorials are very basic though and consist only of text telling you what to do. So you should bring some basic knowledge with you. Luckily, there are tons of tutorials teaching you what you need here on YouTube. The IL-2 series consists of several installations, namely Battle of Stalingrad, Battle of Moscow, Battle of Kuban, Battle of Bodenplatte and Battle of Normandy. The decision which one to get is yours to make. See which planes and scenarios you like the most and buy the corresponding package. The earlier parts of the series are on sale quite often for about 10 to 15 euros. Battle of Stalingrad for example is still a good place to start. It has a well-rounded selection of planes you can fly throughout the early, middle and late stages of the war. Premium planes are included in the premium packages. But most of them also are sold separately. 
To support the game, you could also decide to buy everything you want directly from 1C's own store, so they get every cent you invest without paying the Steam tax. There are no drawbacks here, versions are the same on both platforms. Isle 2 also has a very active multiplayer community if that's what you're after. Some of the scripted campaigns are very well made and especially the newer ones come with nice voiceovers. You could also play the integrated pilot career. It's not a real dynamic campaign, but better than nothing and quite fun. There's a nice free mod called Pat Wilson's Campaign Generator, which generates very complex interconnected missions on a dynamic battlefield. It even takes supply routes and plane production schedules into consideration. Below the line, Isle 2 is a good single player and an excellent multiplayer experience. It also features biplanes, by the way, if you want to feel like Manfred von Richthofen or Billy Bishop. Next up is DCS, Digital Combat Simulator from Eagle Dynamics. Another possible point of entry if you're more into modern jets. Yes, DCS has Warbirds too, but in my books, its biggest strength lies in modern and especially Cold War jet simulation. And on top of that, helicopters. It also features like FS2020 clickable cockpits, which means every switch, lever and instrument inside the plane is modeled and working. Military planes are more complicated than civil ones though and require deep knowledge of startup procedures, radar operation and weapon systems. Good news is that the integrated tutorials, especially for more recently released planes, are well crafted. There also are lots of very skilled creators on YouTube teaching you everything you need to know. I'll put some links to them in the description below. If you decide to start your journey with DCS, you have several options. 1. Download it for free and try out the SU-25. Yes, you can play completely for free. The SU-25T is a low fidelity aircraft, which means there isn't a clickable cockpit but you get a good taste of the game and tens of hours of training and combat missions. 2. Get an F-16 or an F-18. They are comparably easy to learn with their pilot-centric interface. The in-game tutorials are very well made and there's an abundance of resources on YouTube for both planes. If you're more into carrier ops, the F-18 is your plane. If you don't care, each of them will be fine. 3. Get the plane you love the most and learn it, even if it's not a more or less streamlined experience like the F-16 or the F-18. But it's the plane you love since your childhood which will carry you through the rough patches of the learning curve. That's why I've started with the beautiful Mirage 2000C for example. 4. Get the Flaming Cliffs package. It's relatively cheap but comes with several planes to fly, including an F-15 and an Su-27 along with training missions, combat missions and campaigns. There are no clickable cockpits, but that's something you can't expect for a package with more than 5 different planes for 25 euros on sale. DCS also is an option if you want to fly helicopters. Its rotary wing simulation is considered as one of the best on the market. Also, if you're not sure which helicopter or plane you want to learn, all modules have a 2 week free trial period. What DCS doesn't feature is a campaign mode. You can buy and play scripted campaigns of varying quality for specific planes, but beyond that there's not a lot to do besides transitioning into multiplayer or learning another plane, in case you know the ones you already got like the back of your hand. But rest assured, for example, learning to land an F-18 with zero sight in the fog just by instruments on a moving carrier will keep you busy long enough. And that's only one challenging procedure of many you might try to master, like BVR combat or air refueling. If you decide to start with TCS, also keep Minky's checklists in the back of your head. You can put these checklists on your kneeboard to help you remember your plane's procedures like how to start the engine, take off and instrument alignment. Link is in the description below. I should also add that the non-steam version you can buy in Eagle Dynamics Store is better in any way. The plane trials don't work in the Steam version and you also get so-called miles on every purchase which you can use for discounts on further purchases. Now, before we move on to talk a little bit about equipment requirements like sticks, throttles and pedals, let me quickly go over some other simulations or sim-like games you might find interesting. 
Everyone needs an individual way to get into things. One of the following sims might work even better for you than the ones I already mentioned. Our first contender is X-Plane 12. It's considered by many as the most realistic non-combat aircraft simulator. It, on average, dives deeper into the subtleties of each plane than FS2020. This doesn't mean that FS2020 is shallow, still X-Plane is more sophisticated in simulating some of the plane systems. It also simulates helicopters very well. X-Plane doesn't look as pretty though, because it lacks photogrammetry for cities amongst other features. You can see the difference in this comparison between Gibraltar in X-Plane on top and Flight Simulator on bottom. So, if you decide to fully commit to civil aviation, take your time to compare X-Plane and FS2020 and see which sim fits you best. You can try out X-Plane 12 for free. The limitations are a 15 minute time limit per flight and not a lot of scenery available. But you'll still get a good impression of how the sim feels and plays. Then there's Falcon BMS. It's an impressive project run by a team of modders. All you need is the old Falcon 4.0 game for a few bucks and you're good to go. Install the mod, done. You now have the most in-depth simulation of an F-16 Viper on your PC, which on top of that performs very well. It also features an insanely detailed dynamic campaign, which sets it apart from any other sim known to me. In short, DCS is prettier, BMS is deeper. But the learning curve is even more grueling. It will get a completely new terrain rendering engine in the next big update though, which addresses one of its biggest flaws, which is the tiled terrain. They are also working on an F-15 for you to fly. So I suggest you keep an eye on BMS if you love either plane and an immersive single player experience. Next up is War Thunder. Yes, you heard me right. I really mentioned this game here. It's a free to play game you only need a mouse and keyboard for. Its simulation aspects are rudimentary compared to the other games I mentioned here. But it's comparably easy to pick up and you can absolutely learn the tactical side of air combat and general flight dynamics in this game. Like how to position, how to aim your guns, basic fighter maneuvers, pursuit curves and other stuff like the principles of energy retention and conservation. And last but not least, there's VTOL VR. It's like a simplified DCS, which means it's not as overwhelming, but still offers enough complexity to get a grip on how to fly a simulated plane. If you already have a VR headset, then check some reviews and maybe give it a try. If not, there's a non-VR mod called Flat Screen you could try. Alright, let's talk gear. What you should always get, because it's dead cheap, is some kind of head tracking. The best option I've tested is Smooth Track for Android. It uses your phone's camera to track your head, which allows you to intuitively look around inside the airplane. You don't need to press any key, which is just ultra convenient and on top of that frees up input options for other purposes. Tutorials for Smooth Track are all over the internet, I'll link one in the description below. It's 10 bucks on the Play Store. There are other free options like Aruko Paper Tracker you can craft easily at home. I tried them out. For me though, Smooth Track worked best out of the box. You should even set up a head tracker if you use a VR headset. VR is the best way in my books to play flight sims. The immersion factor is just insane and not comparable to anything you can do with screens, no matter how many you put up around you. Still, playing in pancake mode on your screen with active head tracking can be better for learning stuff. You may for example open tutorial videos on your second screen or tab out easily to look something up online. That's no problem with head tracking, but it's a bit clunky in VR. Then there are HOTA systems, which is short for hands on throttle and stick. This means you have a separate throttle unit and a stick to control your plane. So, as a beginner, do you need costly and sophisticated hardware from premium manufacturers? No. Do you need a HOTA system at all? Also, no. As I already mentioned, a gamepad lets you take off and fly in MSFS 2020. Some people even successfully play IL-2 multiplayer with a standard Xbox gamepad. It's not the perfect solution, but it gets the job done, especially if you just want to test the waters. Another option are flight sticks. These are throttle and stick combined into a single unit. 
You need three analog axes to control your plane. One for pitch, one for yaw and one for roll, which is usually operated by rotating the stick. It's referred to as a twist function. The cheapest entry device with reasonable quality is the Logitech 3D Pro. Combine it with your keyboard and you're good to go. If you want to make sure though that you'll be comfortably able to control most systems of modern jets, there's no way around a HOTUS system. The best and most versatile entry-level one is the Thrustmaster T16000 FCS. It offers enough analog access to fly any plane or helicopter or even a spaceship with 6 degrees of freedom movement. That separates it from the X-52 and the X-52 Pro for example. If you want to focus on helicopters, I'll suggest you invest in a set of additional pedals. While you can fly a helicopter with a stick's twist function for tail rotor control, it's not a lot of fun in my experience and my wrist did hurt after 15 minutes. You need the rudder for every turn and to keep the helo stable while hovering, which means you're constantly adjusting. The rudder paddles on the T16000 FCS are an okay substitute though. Not as good as dedicated paddles, but much better than twist. Over time you'll determine what kind of equipment you need and want. Then you'll take a good look at brands like VKB, WinWing, Whirlpool, Next Level Racing and DOF Reality, just to name a few. Still, you might already be sure that you'll stick with the hobby. Then I suggest to invest a little bit more money into more precise and durable gear from the get-go. Check out my HOTAS overview video to help you make an educated choice. I've included most of the relevant devices from entry level to high end and I also show some well matching combinations. Subscribe for more interesting content. Thanks for watching and fly safe.